I'm Noam Roblod, founder of the Digestive Health Institute and creator of the Fast Track Diet. I'd like to make a short video talking about the Fast Track Diet. What is it? Who is it for? And why is it effective? Um, first of all, it's not really just a diet. It's a system, and it's based on three different pillars. The first one is limiting hard to digest fermentable carbohydrates using a calculation I created called uh, fermentation potential or FP. And um, the idea behind it is that we any foods that are not fully digested and absorbed can potentially overfeed blooms of gas producing bacteria. Um, and so this type of dysbiosis can create a lot of problems and symptoms. And you'll see why that's important in a minute. Um, the second pillar is identifying and addressing potential underlying or contributing causes. And there's many of these, 25 or 30 at least. And the idea is to rule a lot of them out and, and zero in on the ones that are important to you because they will be different for different people. And the third part has to do with what you might call pro-absorption, pro-digestion behaviors and practices, again, aimed at minimizing malabsorption. Um, so these three pillars are explained in detail in the fast tracked digestion books. There's one on heartburn and one on IBS. I also created the fast tracked diet mobile app, and that will help you more easily implement the diet. So who's the diet for? Um, well, people with irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, gastroesophageal reflux disease, GERD, chronic acid reflux, and a variety of other functional gastrointestinal issues that involve dysbiosis. Um, see, in addition to a variety of symptoms with these conditions, such as gas, bloating, abdominal pain, reflux, cramping, um, altered bowel habits, they also involve dysbiosis. And what is that? Um, well, it's, it's an imbalance or an overgrowth of bacteria in our intestines, and it can take many forms. There's more, um, as this is studied more, there's more of these that have been identified. So you've probably heard about SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, but we now know that some people can have CIFO, small intestinal fungal overgrowth, IMO for intestinal methanogen overgrowth, these archaea organisms that make methane. And then there's also something I've been loosely calling LIBO for large intestinal bacterial overgrowth. There's a couple of really interesting studies in 2014 and 15 that show that LIBO is a real concern for people with these conditions. Um, so the fast track diet is designed to address these forms of dysbiosis. Um, and for more information on that, on how it would address these different forms of dysbiosis, you can watch my free masterclass and I'll put a link in the comments below. Um, so why is this fast track diet effective for these conditions? Um, first of all, it's the only diet that limits the full spectrum of these hard to digest, but fermentable carbohydrates. And those include lactose, fructose, resistant starch, fiber, and there's many types of fiber, and sugar alcohols. Um, and this is not only based on my own extensive research over the last 17 years, but also you can look at the textbook of primary and acute care medicine in the chapter on intestinal gases. They flag those same five carbohydrate types. Um, and also the NICE guidelines, the European NICE guidelines, uh, their recommendations are based on extensive review of the published literature and Cochrane reviews. They identify the same five that I did. Um, so, and this combined with working on the underlying causes and the pro-absorption behaviors and practices makes it a more um, complete solution. And so why, why is it so important to limit these five types of carbohydrates, particularly at the front end when you're first going on a diet like this? Um, well, I believe, and there is a lot of evidence for this, that these that undigested or unabsorbed carbohydrates um, are the main driving force behind GERD, IBS, and these other functional GI conditions and dysbiosis. Um, so, and for more information on my um, theory of the underlying cause of acid reflux and why it ties into this type of dysbiosis, um, and this has been um, uh, written about by Dr. Mike Eads, Chris Kresser, Mark Sisson, and other practitioners, um, you can read my four-part article 
on GERD at digestivehealthinstitute.org. And I'll put a link to that below. Um, now, for LPR, that's kind of a special case of GERD, laryngopharyngeal reflux, um, the damage, the irritation, the, the symptoms are more in the um, upper esophagus, the throat, the vocal cords, even the eustachian tubes, sinuses, and aspiration into the lungs. And uh, for that case, um, proton pump inhibitors that, that offer some symptomatic release for tip, relief for typical heartburn are not going to be useful for LPR. It's been well studied, many publications, meta-analyses, they don't work any better than placebo. So for LPR, and it's a subtle but persistent irritation, it's going to take a while to get it under control, but you need to stop reflux. And we know that because there are studies on fundoplication procedures that actually help LPR symptoms. It's invasive surgery. I'm not recommending it, but as a proof of principle, um, it does show that stopping the reflux is important. And that is what the fast track diet is designed to do by putting on microbes on a diet. Fewer microbes, less of the overgrowth, uh, less of these gases and so forth. Um, so keep in mind that there are other diets that limit carbohydrates, but this, the fast track diet is the only one that limits all five types quantitatively, by the way, of these hard to digest, but fermentable carbohydrates. Um, and you couple that with identifying and addressing underlying causes and pro-absorption behaviors and practices. Um, so thanks for watching and keep in mind that holistic dietary approaches are advancing. They're much more scientifically based um, just in the books I've written in the fast track digestion book. There's some um, books, IBS and Hopper, and there's some 150 different um, journal citations there.